What up guys, back for another episode and uh, I decided today I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to rebuild a brake caliper. Now, I don't have a new piston and like I said in my last video, uh, it's not a good idea to rebuild these if you don't get a new piston with it because the reason why they normally go bad is because the piston gets pitted and the little rubber seal just gets stuck and doesn't want to move the piston anymore. But I'm at least going to show you guys exactly how to rebuild it. Okay, so here's what the rebuild kit looks like. Not really sure why they gave me two packs of this red type grease and one pink. I don't know. But uh, if you guys are wondering where I got this, I got it from uh, Z1 Motorsports. Link will be in the description. Now this actually, I think it was only like 30 bucks. And it actually comes with enough stuff to rebuild two calipers, which is pretty cool. And there, there, and there. Only thing I didn't get, I didn't quite understand, is this little weird seal here and here. And these are obviously just your plugs for your, uh, your bleeder right there. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what these are for, but I'm sure we're going to find out once we get in here. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the vise, make my life easier, and go ahead and break these bolts loose so that I can separate this and give me much more room to the uh, piston itself. And hey, anytime you can use a breaker bar to save your back, do it. Trust me, because my back is screwed. So once you get them loosened up all the way, they literally just pull right up out like that. And uh, I'm going to take them and just set them right here because I'm going to clean them all off and re-grease them because this grease is crazy old. Alright, so once you do that, this thing will just literally fall right apart, right like that. A good thing to do is get a good look at your seals here so you can match the other ones back up. Okay, so you can see with this right here, that larger part from the bottom obviously goes down in the caliper bracket itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these seals off now. I'm not sure exactly how tough comes right off. Super, so easy. Cool deal. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll clean these all out too. Now how this works is with this seal on there, this little ring goes in that seal and gives it a super tight seal, so it's actually kind of stiff. Now, I've seen guys actually take this down and pop that seal off before actually taking the piston out, but I feel like that's just going to be a nightmare. It'd be so much easier to get that out after the piston's out. So, let's go ahead and focus on the piston right now. Now, I've heard of putting things in here and beating it with a hammer, but you're going to trash this piston and you don't want to mar up the piston. Um, so I found another trick where people were actually using compressed air with an air compressor and shooting it out. So that is what I'm going to try. Okay, so the goal here is to put air through this hole and have the air not leaking and so it'll push this piston out. Well, the only thing I could really find, I've seen people going like Lowe's, getting attachments and stuff like that. You can put on things like this kind of like a cone shaped type thing and then it fits in there perfect well I don't have that so I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna seal it off and I came across this little piece right here and as you can see in the end of it now I guess it depends on which side goes in I think it's this side yeah this side screws in which is perfect because this side as you can see it's normal through that hole but you guys can see that actually gets super small like chokes it down to a teeny tiny thing and it's actually just about perfect for that right there to fit right in there if you can see that should be perfect so I need to take this 
And go figure, the threads just happen to be the same for this. So let me go ahead and get that on there tight and we'll go from there. Only major issue I see is that this hose has a massive leak in it. Right there. But, still gonna give it a try. All right, so clearly, I got it out a tiny bit. If anything, I might have just pulled that boot out a little bit. I feel like it came out a little bit, but I think this thing is just frozen in there. So what I'm gonna do is take this and try to compress it back in, and then maybe that'll help loosen it up and then it'll come out a lot easier. All right, so it's working. Cool deal. Okay, so with this thing pressed back in all the way, I'm going to take time out and I'm going to go ahead and get this rubber boot off. Alright, so I don't actually have the ring, but I just got to hold this and I'm just going to rip this thing because it's not going to hurt anything. So let me go ahead and rip this thing out of here. So we got a new one, so it's not going to hurt anything. And it'll give us better access down inside there. Okay, so unfortunately, into this hose is just screwed, man. As you can see, it's a massive hole right there. I cannot get this thing to hold enough pressure, so I'm gonna try a different technique. So what I'm gonna do now is, I found something with a nice flat end. I obviously don't want something pointy like a screwdriver or anything like that. A nice flat end, and I'm going to try tapping this with a hammer. Okay. Nice and easy. Try not to mar up that piston. Now, if you're replacing the piston, it wouldn't be a big deal. You could just beat the crap out and get it out of there. It's working. Okay, as you can see, got a good ways out, but now it's actually taking, it's going to take a lot more force. Uh, this thing's, I don't want it to hit right there. Get something a little longer, like a bolt. Perfect fit. And here we go. Just ignore this. I cut my hand. <laughs> And there we go. Piston is out. So now we should be able to tackle this ring inside here a lot easier. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on. Just taking a screwdriver, putting it right back in there. And then just peeling it out right like that don't worry about destroying it because you got a new one and there we go ring is out take the old seal out okay so I'm gonna go ahead and clean the piston up here Let's see what we got okay and this is exactly like I figured so this is why I got I told you guys it's a bad idea to rebuild these without getting a new piston. And right there, see all that scarring that's going on? You can feel it's real rough all the way around. So unfortunately, this piston's trashed. And I can show you that because how this works with the other seal is this thing actually sits on there like that and then kind of gets as you, you push on it, it kind of folds like that, folds like that, and then comes up real minimal, real minimal. Well, if it's dragging on something, that rubber's dragging on something rough, it's going to tear it, tear it, tear it, and then seize it up. So that's why this one, this is definitely a shot. But I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it anyways, just so I can show you guys how to do it. Okay, so now we want to get... If you look right down in here, you see a little rubber ring. 
Okay, let's try this with a better screwdriver. Get right up under it. And there we go. Popped right out. Go ahead and take it out. And that right there is the heart and soul of how this thing actually operates. And the inside, look at all that dirt and debris, rust, everything. No wonder this thing was froze up. That's exactly why it was trashed. So let me take time out, clean up all my hands and everything, and then we'll get all this stuff cleaned up as best we can. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of work on the piston to get the best I can, and uh, we'll go from there. Now I noticed when I was taking these bolts out, one of them came out super easy and one of them was kind of difficult. And after looking at it close, you can see how that one is. Well, this one has that little rubber piece that I couldn't figure out where it went. So that's just as simple as literally popping it right off there. And there we go, right off. Okay, let me go ahead and show you guys what I've done thus far. So I went ahead and uh, over my other shed, I have a wire wheel like this. Uh, but it's like attached to like a, on a bench, like a grinder type deal. And I just ran it over this thing as best I could. And as you can see, like right in through there, it's not bad at all. But a little bit of dark right in there where you can see it froze up. And it's super hard to see. But if you look super close in the light, you can still see a little bit of pitting. See that? Right there's a really good spot all the way around. And there's some pitting up in here. Big spot right in there. So, like I said though, I'm not worried about this. Uh, I'm just showing you guys how it's done. Okay, then I also took, uh, I found like a little hand uh, brush. Uh, kind of like, uh, exactly like right, this right here, but it was a tiny little mini one, almost like a uh, toothbrush. And I went ahead back in there, as you can see, and got everything nice and cleaned up. So, now I can go ahead and start reassembling everything. We're going to start with the easiest one first. It's going to be putting the new rubber O-ring, I guess you could say, on there. And that is done. Next, uh, go ahead and what we're going to do is go ahead and put the seal down inside here. But we need to go ahead and kind of pre-lube this thing up. Alright, so I got myself some cheapo brake fluid and uh, I'm going to go ahead and lube this thing up real good. So actually just put it down inside the bottle, shook the bottle up, pull it back out and she's good to go. So slide it back down in. You guys remember the second groove. I'm going to show you real quick. Alright, so this goes into, not the first, but the second groove. So I went ahead and just got one little part started, and the rest is literally just kind of falling right down into place. And that seal is in and good to go. Now don't let it freak you out, because when you're putting it in there, there's going to be a point where there's like a, like you get all the way around, there'll be like a part where the bunch of slack and you're like oh man they sent me the wrong one it's too big it's not gonna fit it'll fit just slowly work it all the way around it just seems like it won't but it'll definitely fit so let's go ahead and jump to the easiest part putting these new ones on now remember that wide part at the bottom is what actually goes on here and there we go other side Almost got it. Found. And there we go. There's the on. Okay. Now, I'm taking time out from this. And I'm going to go ahead and get these bolts back through there. So let me go ahead and get some grease opened up. And for this, just 
Don't have to go crazy with it. It's a sparing amount. And there we go. Alright, so now we'll take time out from that and focus on putting the piston back in. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead put a little bit more brake fluid in here on this on that little rubber o-ring because I'm and I'm going to go ahead and just put some brake fluid on the whole inside just to help guide this piston down in. So just kind of drench the whole inside. And if you're wondering how this goes, as you can see, see before how this was laying like that, and you can see where I torn off of it and then finally got it out. So that's not right right there. That's right. That's how you want it. It's just going to be right like that. So you can see flat part of the top, flat part of the top, which will stretch backwards. This way will allow the piston to stretch this way, right like that. So then we just take this and it's best just go ahead and stretch it over the piston first. Put it all in at one time, make your life a lot easier. So I just try to get it nice and right around that top lip, right like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and lube up the piston itself, some brake fluid. And the just the back of the seal. All right, now the key to getting this started is going to be getting it in there as straight as humanly possible. At this point, break out the big C clamp. Okay, so you want this to go in there as evenly as possible, so you don't want to like start beating the crap out of it with a hammer or anything crazy like that. Okay, so I figured out an even better way. The inside of that is hollow. Literally, just took this couple taps right in and now we can turn our attention to that seal which is probably gonna be the biggest nightmare all right so what I'm doing with the seal took the ring off that's almost impossible to do right now I'm just going around and as you can see just tucking it in just tucking that seal in all the way around all right once you've got your seal all the way around like so then I'm going to go ahead and take this, drive it back out a little ways, right like that. And that way we can go ahead and get this snap ring down inside there. All right, so I went ahead and just got the corner started right here. I'm just working my way around. And you actually feel it once you get down to the groove, it actually snaps in place. Got it worked all the way around. It's this last little bit here. So now I'll just show you guys what it looks like. Nice and sealed. There's what it looks like when the piston comes out. And then, this is what it looks like when the piston goes back in. Right like that. Definitely a million times easier to just put the seal on the piston, put the piston in, get the piston in, and do that little, the, uh, the snap ring dead last. Definitely. Alright, so now we go ahead and take this. Here and get these bolts started in. Now, in case you're wondering, and I'm sure you are, which side the bolt with the rubber piece goes on, and it's this back side. 
mean, a lot of times uh, I've heard people say if you just got calipers or if you hadn't had a car for very long and you have issues with it sticking, it could just be that these boots went bad and your slider pins aren't working like they should because they should go like this. Nice and smooth. And sometimes dirt obviously just gets worked in there and it gets rough and it gets stuck. Clearly in my situation, the piston was stuck, but yeah, all back together. And that's it guys. That's how easy it is to rebuild a caliper. Now if I actually had a new piston with this, this thing would have been good to put back on the car, man. But as you guys know, I got the replacement because eventually I'm getting a big brake kit. So all right guys, so there you go, man. It's that easy to build a rear brake caliper. I think maybe I had about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, Probably the hardest part was getting the piston out and then getting that seal in, but still getting the piston out maybe took 10, 15 minutes and that seal maybe took five. Really wasn't that big a deal, man. But make sure you guys stay tuned because I got some more stuff coming uh, for brake upgrades. Uh, actually, it might be here today and I might be able to put it on tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, man, if you guys liked the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. Uh, make sure you guys turn on your notifications so you can see my newest videos. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel and you want to see some more of my content, hit that subscribe button. And, uh, hmm. Peace!